not talking right now. We're waiting for the recording. Okay, here we go. So, uh, okay, uh, can you hear me now? Gilbert, okay. Okay, so we, today we're going to talk about database technologies and what they are and SQL versus NoSQL database. And so what is database technology? Uh, database technology is, allows us to take an information and store it in an organized way and process it easily that users can be easily uh, access the data and interact with the data and a database technology allows us to manage our data in a more organized way. So we're going to talk about the database technologies that you might be using in your project this week. And we're going to discuss SQL versus NoSQL in database. So what is database? Uh, a database is just an organized collection of data that we store and access uh, from a computer system. It's a very organized and um, secure way to access our data. So uh, a database can be more complex if they are often and they are often developed using a formal design and a modeling technique. And there we have we might have different types of databases. We might have relational database, no relational database, and cloud database. So a relational database is uh, made up of tables, columns, rows and and it's a it's a way of structuring information in tables and rows and columns and had and it has the ability to establish links and relationships between these tables and these rows uh, which makes it easier to understand and gain insights about the data we have at various points and so uh we may have uh, tables and procedures and triggers with, with the data that fits into a predefined category or schema. So uh, there are different type of relational databases that are MySQL, Postgres, MySQL Server, and SQLite. So we have uh, concerning, based on our project and needs, we have different type of databases that we adapt to our system. And the second one, the cloud database is just a database that is typically run on a cloud computing platform like AWS, GCP, or Azure. And this cloud service providers provide us the access to these databases without concerning or worrying about the physical attributes of the database or managing the, the concerns about managing the databases. So for example, we have AWS relational database, RDS, which is a relational database that AWS provides. We have Cloud Spinner, and we also have a non NoSQL no database, MongoDB Atlas. It's a cloud database. And so, what is the difference between SQL and NoSQL? Well, first, what is SQL? And SQL is just a, stru a structured query language, and it's a standard, the standard programming language that you use to manage our relational database the databases that have column and rows and tables. And we perform various operations on this data. And in non-SQL database, there are databases that are typically designed to avoid the whole row and column and uh, issues. And they are designed to be used across large distributed system. So uh, SQL, SQL databases are mainly used in a, in a central, in centralized system. and NoSQL databases are mainly used to upload a large distributed system and they are not much more scalable and than the SQL databases, but they are much faster and they are easy to handle very large data than the traditional databases. And unlike those databases, databases cannot use a standard tabular relationships. Uh, but usually we have it's a concern that most people think that NoSQL databases don't have a sort of model, but they do, and it's not the and it's not the traditional relational way. But there is a, a data model. We can talk about that in future. And some advantage of a SQL database is that it stores data in a high structured tabular form, and it might be easier to access this uh, since it has 
the, it has a very structured way of organizing data and we have multiple rows and multiple columns and it's easier to scale in vertically so we can have uh, multiple rows in SQL uh, data, database and it's easier to structure them if we want to scale so it's highly flexible and it's easy to maintain and they are effective for data storing on a single server so like I said uh, they're not usually used in a distributed system if they're mostly used in a single server system and some dis disadvantage of sql database is that they don't they're not scaled very well on a distributed system like i said it's you can add multiple rows but it's harder to uh, scale in a, a vertical in a horizontal way so and they are very expensive related to the no sql database since they require uh, high computational powers and yeah and the advantage of NoSQL database is that it uses an expensive storage and processing power so it's cheaper and it's op often open source so it's very cost effective so you when you're working on project if cost is what you're trying to scale, uh, scale or yeah, NoSQL database could be uh, a solution to your project. And it it's highly available and it is fast. So we can get our data easily and in a fast in a fast way and NoSQL database can related to the SQL database. And it works better across distributed system, like I said before. And so when we are adding when we're working with new data models, it's easily it can easily be flexible. So uh, but some uh, some disadvantage is that it might be difficult to maintain. So it might be difficult to add more rows. Like it, and concerning in SQL, it's easily it can we can add rows easily. But here it might be a difficult difficult to manage compared to the SQL one. So here is just an example of SQL database. This is just a key value pair example where we have a a key or an id and has a value of some kind and we have a, a date type and it has a value and this is how we access uh one way to access a no sql database this is a json format and this is uh, clearly a more structured and tabular form of the sql database this is very structured and we have uh, columns and rows to define our data and this is the traditional or relational database uh, system. So uh, what are NoSQL data models? Like I said uh, before, uh, they are designed, NoSQL databases are designed to break away from rows and columns from the traditional data model. But most people think that they don't have a sort of data model. And it's not true. A useful dis description of how the data will be organized and a schema is important and in NoSQL data model we have three type of data model this is the document model these are uh, they replace the familiar rows and columns and they use document storage models so here each model is structured and they are frequently used in a JSON model and a document model is associated with object oriented programming where each model document is document is documented as an object. In graph model, uh, it uses graph models and it usually requires all data to be stored in a big or in one machine, which neglects, neglects all of the key advantage of NoSQL database, which is the distributed aspect of it. And uh, this class of database uses structures like nodes and ages and properties and the relationship between these nodes. and it makes it easy to model a relationship because it easily can, can easily be visualized and between it's easier to draw and model relationships between entities and applications. One example can be the Oracle node NoSQL database. This is a graph one example of graph model that uses a graph graph as a data model. And the third one is key value model, like I described before. This is an one type of uh, NoSQL database model, and it's 
a key required to ret retrieve and update the data. So when we want to retrieve the data, we use the key value and to retrieve and update the data. So the key value data model is very simple and it can be scaled easily, but it's it might be uh, it might be a bit costly. So so yeah, this is the data model of NoSQL database. Um, so this is just a brief introduction of SQL and NoSQL database. I'm sure most of you are familiar with it. This is just to get you rolling and to get you started. So we have uh, some references here that you can see on. You can check out this resource for better and more depth understanding of the database system and the database technologies and the difference between the SQL and NoSQL database. So, uh, do we have any question before moving to the next uh, part of the presentation? I hope you guys are following. Okay, on the net, go ahead. Uh, what do you mean by uh, scaling horizontally and vertically? Can you uh, explain a little bit? So, wh what do you mean by? Scaling horizontally and vertically, what's the difference? So, uh, when we add, so horizontally means when we are trying to add rows to a database. So, in a SQL, uh, in a SQL database, we can easily add rows and column and rows in a database and in NoSQL database we, and it's harder to add columns to databases and so what does row and column define in a database do you know what they represent oh yeah sort of uh, but like I hear I hear like uh, when, when we talk about scaling uh, the difference between like SQL and NoSQL databases is that yes. like, the ability to scale uh, vertically and horizontally and it always convinces me that what is the real difference what do we mean by when we scale horizontally and vertically that's a question if you get it so uh, horizontally means uh, a row so when when we have a record in a date and a table or in, it, in our database that is represented in a row, and when we have different attributes or a different different attributes to define our record, that's the column. So that's the vertical aspect of the a, a tabular form. So when we mean scale, that can easily be scalable horizontally. It means that we can add more rows easily to a, a database. And SQL database we can add rows easily, but it's harder to add verticals or attributes to a data type. So what we mean is that when we say it's harder to scale vertically, it means that it's harder to add columns or attributes to a data. Okay, uh, if I get it right, uh, it means that uh, it's like uh, in a SQL database, uh, uh -huh. it's more rigid because we have to follow some kind of schemas and that uh -huh. those schemas are highly tied with the columns, which means like which represents the uh, horizontal uh, side of the database, right? So uh -huh. okay, I, I think I get the, the difference. Thank you. Okay. Uh, all right. Yeah. Uh, do we have any more questions before moving to database schema design? So I'm hoping you guys are understanding what I'm... Okay, so should we just move on? No question? Okay. So let's start talking about database schemas and what are database schemas? Okay. Um, okay, thank you. Um, so what are database schemas? So since you guys are quiet, I'm just going to ask this question. So anybody here willing to answer the question, what are database schemas? Okay, 
Go ahead, brother. Yes. It's the skeleton design of the database. It's, it's the structure of the database. Uh, okay. Yes. That's correct. Thank you. And it's good to hear that most of you are here. Okay. And and the net. Go ahead. Yeah, there is schema. Uh, we use schemas in SQL databases mostly, uh, and most SQL are. Uh, uh, I mean, classified as schema-less databases. As uh, my friend said, like, schema is a rule that we have to follow to structure the data in a SQL database. Okay, yes, that's right. Thank you, guys. And <clears throat> yeah, uh, you guys are right. So what is a database schema? It, that, uh, so it defines how a data is organized within a relational database. And it in, includes uh, the logical constraints of the tables or the data types or the relationships between these entities. And that's what database schema mean. Okay. Can you see my screen? So, uh, I hope you can see my screen. So, yeah. okay, a database yeah, schema yeah. is a structured, a skeleton structure that represents the logical view of our entire database and it defines how a data is organized and how the relationships between this data is associated and how they are related with each other. And it forms all the relationships and the constraints that are to be applied on the data. So it defines the overall structure of the data. That is what database schema does. And we have different types of database schemas. And uh, we have actually, we have three types of database schemas. But for now, we can just talk about the two database schemas. And the, so uh, like we said, a schema is uh, the overall description of the database and the basic structure of how the data will be stored in a database is what schema is and the first type of schema is the physical database schema so uh this this schema pertains to be actually stored in the data and it's it's form of storage like file indice and etc and it defines how a data will be stored in a secondary storage schema a schema so in a physical schema it describes it describes the database designed at a physical level but in logical database, it defines the logic constraints that need to be applied on the data. It defines the tables, it defines the procedures and the views and the integrity constraints of the database and the schema. And it describes the, des the design of the database at a logical level. And the third one is the view schema, but it's mostly the two are the most uh, mostly uh, used schemas. And it, the view schema defines the design of the database and at a view level, if that, that makes sense. And and the difference is that uh, when in logical schema, we have different types of attributes. And in physical schema, we're not concerned about the attributes of the system. We're mostly uh, concerned on the tabular names and the tabular structure of the of the of the database, we're concerned about the column and names and the data, and the data types. So we can we are concerned about the database in a physical level. But in logical schema, we're mostly concerned about the attributes and the relationships, like the primary and secondary keys of the de database. So this is the basic difference between the physical and logical schema. Uh, this is um, an example of a SQL database schema. I don't know if you can see it well. So this shows the relationships between different. Uh, so this shows the different dif uh, the relationship of different attributes, and we have where every uh, and where each and every is connected to other types of database schemas, and it shows the, high, the higher level of the relationship between the. Database schema. This is an SQL uh, schema, like and so uh, define. Let's define a database schema. So 
one example here is this is defining a MySQL, MySQL database schema where we, we defined a table and if it doesn't exist where we create an, a database where it doesn't where if it doesn't exist. So this is just the one example. We can see how we can create a database schema for our project this week. Maybe this might not be helpful. So we can have a look at that one. So we can take a look in, at the end of the presentation. So let me just stop sharing and share my code. Uh, can you see my VS code? So for this week's project, you are guys are trying to design a database schema and you are trying to populate the data, a data into our database. So we will see how to do that in a, in a bit. We have we have all of this in a in the drive, so you can access it from there and you can get all the code and it's you can use it as a starter code and it's going to be less work when you are working on the database and when you are trying to populate the database. So, so when you're uh, creating a schema for this week's project, we have different types of keys that are displayed in our text. So we have seen the different types of IDs and we have seen uh, the created time of the tweets and the source and we've seen how many the count of favorite tweets and retweets and original others. And we're going to use this uh, to design our schema. So uh, this is just an example. Uh, we have this in the drive, so you, can, you guys can access it from there. So uh, so you can add or delete some of this. Um, I'm not sure if we have placed in for you guys this week. So we have this is the so we have ID. This is another term, and we have created that. It's going to display the time, and it's not it's a text uh, value, and we have the source. So this is actually very easy, and you guys can access it in the box. So I don't think I need to go over it much. So how you guys populate a data uh, into your database? Uh, so this is found in the drive, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, as well. Um, let me share you the screen, the link to the drive if you want. So, give me a second while I get the the drive link. Okay, now uh, you I see that you already shared it. Thank you. Uh, so uh, you can use that to sh to, as a starter code. And here, uh, I'm not sure I'm supposed to go to the whole code here because it's already provided in the document. So we have since we've already created a schema or schema and I've named it a Twitter schema. So we are going to use this to populate our data and we are using this to create a table. So I've specified the file name, the schema, and yeah, so first we connect. This is actually, it's not gonna work. I've deleted some informations here. So I'm just running this is not gonna work for you guys. So you guys can maybe use, uh, add the connection in an environment and use it here. And so this is the basic connection to the database. I'm, I'm not, sorry, if I'm not going to run this. So since I have, issue with my my sql right now but you guys can run it and it's going to work so here we create a database if 
So we create a database if it doesn't exist and if we haven't already created. And after we created our database, we, we create our tables and we use the schema. We use this schema, the structure that we have defined before to create our tables here. And uh, so this function, what this function does is it's going to create a, a table based on the schemas that you have provided before. And um, so, so how we, we insert data or how we populate more data is this is the main function that, that's asked for you guys is that to populate the data or to insert tweets into our data. So you define uh, different functions here. We have a function here, we connect to our database and we use our data frame. So we have defined our data frame, which is the database, which is the tweets and we insert our query. So here we use our different methods to create. So we have inserted into the table this, this attributes here, if you can, guys can see. And so this is how, uh, so I'm going to add data here like this. So when, we add, when, when we're trying to add data, we, we are trying to index it, the, it we are trying we use it with the index. So I'm trying to add the row at the first, at the arrow index, at the first index. So I'm going, it's going to populate the data with this uh, column and names, and it's going to add it in the rows. So, so the second one, the third, so the other function that is asked for you guys is after populating the uh, new data into our, in your database, you guys need to fetch the data. So we use this function to fetch our data. So, so, so yeah, this is basically it, you guys. I, I, I wish I have run this and shown you guys, but it's, it's going to be showing me errors since I'm having errors with my, my SQL. So, so I hope you guys can, you guys can run this. And if you have issues, maybe you can ask directly tagging me on Slack. Maybe I can help you if you have any issues, but you can use the starter uh, code that's provided. That's going to make all your work very easy. And yeah, this is what today presentation holds. So yeah, thank you guys. Do you have any question? I hope I'm not going too fast. So let's see if that was you guys some understood or got some information that would help you in this. Okay. Uh, is that? Do I have a hand? Do we have a question? So what is the expected output? So uh, if I'm not mistaken, you, it's asked that you guys are asked to create a schema and to populate your to pop to populate your database and fetch data from your database and and yeah you, you guys uh can maybe use that in your dashboard also um you can display that in a dashboard when you design a dashboard using streamlets uh is that a question johannes Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, my question is just uh, I didn't try it with uh, the MySQL extension in VS Code. Will it work without the extension? I mean, I don't have installed the MySQL community on my machine. Mm -hmm. So do I need to add another extensions? What do you mean? I mean, can, can I can uh, my VS Code uh, directly connect with the uh, install MySQL server, or do we uh, do I have to install another extensions in uh, the VS Code so that it could connect with uh, with the oh, with yes. the server? Oh, I think you need to add uh, add some extension. Yeah, so, yeah, because I ask you because you said it shows uh, you an error within your VS Code drive. So is that the cause? So I mean, so I'm just gonna ask you. SQL extension that is SQL management tool that you need to add in your. It's an extension. So you you add this extension in your VS Code and you are able to connect using the.
first function that I should Okay, let me try. If I got into error, I will just ask you. Ah, cool. Okay, all right. Thank you. Okay, so uh, you can do. You guys can just search my SQL, and it's the first. It's going to pop up on the first one. It's the one that has most uh, use or uh, multiple downloads. So my name is Nardus. My name is Nardus Talon. You can add me. You can tag me in Slack if you have any question. So this is this is me who asked the question. Oh, I think I've already answered that. Okay. Yes, Khalid, uh, you need to you need to install a SQL Server or any kind of, or maybe you can use Postgres. So. It depends on what you use. It's not mandatory, mandatory to use my SQL. It's just what I prefer personally. And you can use Postgres or SQLite. It's up to you. So yeah, you can use Postgres. It's not a problem. It's just that I'm mostly used to using my SQL. That's why, yeah. OK. Uh, yeah, so uh, is there any more question? Is it going to be produced? Yeah, oh, I think so. You need one table. Uh, why would you need more table? I'm not sure if you need more table, but I think one is okay. You just need to populate it with some data. And I think one is enough. Well, I'm not sure. Okay. Okay. So I think guys you guys don't have any more question. So I hope this concept was familiar to you guys. That's why you guys are being quiet. So I'm just going to assume that you guys understood the content of this session today. So thank you guys for your time. Thank you for being here, I'm just going to stop the recording. Uh, thank you. Have a good day.